Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we will be diving into an action thriller movie titled, The Grey. Enjoy the recap. Our story begins with a man called Otway who works for a major oil company in a place that feels like the edge of the world, surrounded by society's cast-offs, ex-cons, fugitives, and the sort of folk who don't fit in anywhere else. But oddly, Otway feels a strange connection to this place, and to these men. Otway's job is far from ordinary, he's tasked with protecting the workers from the local wolf population, a job that weighs heavily on his conscience, as he pens his thoughts reflecting on his life and looking at a cherished wedding photo, he questions his own nature. Has life dealt him a bad hand, or is he in some way responsible for his own isolation and pain? See Otway's past is marred by loss. His heart clings to memories of his wife, now separated from him. It's a loss that aches more than the biting Alaskan frost. So profound is his pain that he has considered ending it, yet, in a moment of poignant symbolism, a wolf's howl brings him back from the brink. Boarding a plane amidst warnings of an incoming storm, Otway clings to his letter, a testament to his inner turmoil. Yet this moment of introspection is interrupted by Todd, a fellow passenger seeking conversation. Otway, lost in his own world, brushes him off with a curt request for solitude. Otway is trying to catch some shut-eye when the plane starts shaking like a leaf in a windstorm. And then out of the blue, Todd pipes up. He's got this wild theory about not doing the head-between-your-knees thing if things go south. Of course, everyone's quick to shoot him down like he's lost his marbles or something. Things seem to settle down for a bit. The flight attendant's doing her rounds, the turbulence has taken a break, but then, a flicker on a screen. The electronics are on the fritz and it's getting chilly in there. And then out of nowhere the plane takes a nosedive. Otway wipes the frost off his window just in time to see one of the turbines ablaze. The plane's free-falling now and part of it just disintegrates. Otway gets thrown out like a ragdoll, landing in a snowbank. He comes to, surrounded by the wreckage of the plane. The sight is pure chaos, twisted metal, snow and fire, screams for help echo in the frigid air. Otway pulls himself together, helps Todd up, and starts looking for other survivors. Among the carnage, a man's lost his grip on reality, convinced that this is all some kind of nightmare that he'll wake up from. As the storm pulls back, it's like the curtain lifting on a scene straight out of a nightmare. It's a head count time, the survivors, the wounded, and then there's one guy bleeding so bad it's clear he's not gonna make it. Otway's the one who has to deliver the gut punch of a news, trying to give him some comfort as he slips away. Burke, one of the survivors, is laughing like a madman trying to cope with the horror around him. All told, they're a ragtag group of seven. And wouldn't you know it, Diaz is pointing fingers at Todd blaming him and his bad luck talk for the crash. But there's no time for blame games, Otway takes charge. It's gonna be night soon, and if they don't want to turn into popsicles, they gotta get a fire going. And when the sun comes up, they need to hit the road, because rescue, that's a long shot. So they start scrounging around for supplies, for anything that'll burn. Otway wanders off from the main crash site, looking for a place to set up camp, when he hears a woman's whimper. He rushes over to help, only to come face to face with a wolf. He tries to scare the beast off, but the whole pack's there, and they're not backing down. Just when things are looking really bad, a couple of guys from the group rush in and pull him out of the fray. Otway's in shock and he's bleeding pretty bad. But he still cracks a joke about turning into a wolf man. He tells the group that the wolves are probably just passing through. But if their dens nearby, say, within 30 miles, they're gonna be in serious trouble. Diaz asks how he knows so much about wolves, and Otway lets them in on his little secret, he's paid to hunt these creatures. Otway suggests they move the bodies away to avoid attracting any more unwanted attention. Because the last thing they need right now is a pack of hungry wolves breathing down their necks. While moving the bodies things get heated between Otway and Diaz. Diaz is caught red-handed, looting the dead. After a terse exchange, Diaz backs off. Later, huddled around a campfire, trying to find some comfort in jokes and meager rations, they hear the unmistakable howl of a wolf. Otway, torch in hand, goes to check it out. What he sees is enough to make anyone's blood run cold. A massive wolf, the pack leader, staring him down. The sight of more glowing eyes in the darkness confirms their fears, they're surrounded. Otway's order rings out clear in the chilling night. Don't move, running will only show weakness and make them targets. The wolves eventually back off, but the survivors are left shaken, setting up two-hour guard shifts to keep watch. One of the guys on his watch steps away with a torch to relieve himself. Suddenly, wolves leap out of the darkness bringing him down in a terrifying blur. Come morning, Otway finds fresh blood and one less man in their group. Finding the body outside the camp, he realizes something chilling. The wolves didn't eat their victim they just killed him. They're not here for food, they're defending their territory. Otway suggests moving towards a tree line. If the wolves see them leaving their territory, maybe they'll back off. If not, at least they'd have better defenses. Diaz, not surprisingly, challenges Otway's leadership, but Otway's not forcing anyone. They can follow if they want. Turns out, everyone chooses to leave with him. Before they set off, Otway asks Henrik to gather all the wallets for the families of the deceased. 
Diaz, still in a foul mood, gripes about wasting time on such matters, but amidst the chaos and danger, Otway is trying to hold on to a shred of humanity, one small act of respect at a time. Otway stumbles upon the letter he'd written, a stark reminder of a past life. Henrik mutters a prayer, and then the six of them set off. The journey's brutal, a bitter wind howling against them, the deep snow slowing them down, they're fighting against nature and they're losing. Todd falls behind and pays a heavy price for it. The wolves pounce on him. Otway can barely hear his screams over the gale. He tries to reach him but the snow swallows his legs holding him back. By the time Otway gets there, it's too late. Todd's gone, but they can't afford to stop, can't afford to grieve. It's getting dark and the snow's getting deeper. They catch sight of wolves closing in on them from both sides and they race for the cover of the forest. They tumble down a slope and scramble to get a fire going. The wolves are all around them their growls and howls echoing in the night. They manage to get a fire started, and suddenly it's eerily silent. Otway starts making spears for defense but Diaz true to form starts mouthing off, mocking their efforts, complaining non-stop. Otway lays it out straight. Talking tough ain't worth squat now, they're all scared, and if Diaz can't admit that, then he's either a fool or a liar. That's when Diaz loses it. Knife in hand he goes for Otway. Talget steps in to cool things down but Diaz elbows him away. Otway kicks at the fire to distract Diaz, then takes him down telling him he's had enough of his antics. Just then the alpha wolf appears, and even Diaz, Mr. Tough Guy, is crawling back in fear. Now they're not just surviving the cold. After the alpha wolf establishes its dominance, it retreats into the darkness. Diaz is left panting, shaken. Otway hands him back his knife, and Diaz apologizes to the group. Just then, another wolf springs from behind attacking Diaz. They manage to kill it, and Otway identifies it as the Omega, an outcast. It was sent to test Diaz. They cook and eat the wolf, grimacing at the taste. It's not great but it's food. Diaz in a show of defiance beheads the wolf. The sight repulses the others, but he's not done. He taunts the unseen pack with the severed head before throwing it into the bushes. The response is immediate, a resonating howl from the Alpha. Diaz's confidence wavers, maybe he's pushed his luck too far this time. Grabbing torches they press on, but Burke is deteriorating, struggling to breathe, they decide to camp for the night. As they huddle together for warmth, they discuss the odds of surviving a plane crash and speculate about fate. Diaz dismisses it all, but it's not all grim talk, they share stories about their lives, the people they love, trying to find some solace in the shared laughter. Otway recalls his father, a heavy drinking Irishman. His father's poem hung on the wall, words that now resonate with their predicament. Once more into the fray, into the last good fight I'll ever know. Live and die on this day, live and die on this day, the poem hits home, leaving a sobering silence. A blizzard is approaching, so they bundle up for the onslaught. Burke doesn't wake up, they wait out the blizzard, drying their clothes, fatigue seeping into their bones, this is a battle of endurance, and it's only getting tougher. Otway spots something promising, saw marks on trees, it means civilization is somewhere nearby. They find themselves at the edge of a cliff, with the sound of a river below. Their best shot at survival is to follow that river but first, they've got to descend this cliff. Otway proposes two options, climb down the trees using some kind of rope or jump off the cliff. Going back isn't an option. Henrik is the first to take the plunge, he says his prayers and jumps. One of the knots comes loose but Diaz manages to catch it. As if that wasn't enough part of the cliff edge crumbles under the snow. Diaz is pulled back just in time, Henrik's okay thankfully. He secures the other end of the rope to a tree, Diaz crosses next, making it safely. Talget, who's got a fear of heights, convinces Otway to go before him. When it's Talget's turn things go awry, his glasses fall off midway, and his leg gets stuck in a knot. Then the rope snaps. Talget's flung into a tree crashing through its branches. The situation's getting grimmer by the minute. Down at the bottom Talget experiences a chilling hallucination of his daughter, but they are wolves, brutally tearing him apart. And then there were three. As they descend, Diaz takes a tumble from the tree, injuring his knee. They press on following the river, but Diaz struggles to keep pace. He finally admits defeat, telling Otway and Henrik to leave him behind. He hands Henrik his wallet, resigns himself to his fate, and refuses to continue. Wishing them good luck, Diaz is left behind. It isn't long before the wolves claim him. Henrik then turns to Otway, asking him about what he was doing in the bar the night before their doomed flight. Otway tries to brush it off, but Henrik tells him that he looked just like Diaz, someone who had given up on life. Henrik had read him like an open book, but none of that matters now, does it? Suddenly two wolves are in hot pursuit, forcing them through the thick snow. Henrik loses his footing and plunges into the river. The strong current hinders him, and Otway jumps in to help. Henrik's foot gets stuck between rocks, and despite Otway's desperate attempts he drowns. Otway manages to climb out of the water, clutching Henrik's backpack. 
he's soaked freezing alone and surrounded by predators, he cries out in frustration, once he regains his composure he continues trudging, barely able to stay on his feet, he pauses, a crushed look on his face, and places everyone's wallets in a pile, he gazes at their pictures, their children, their loved ones, they all have someone waiting for them back home. Agwe pulls out his letter one last time, it dawns on him with a bitter sense of irony, that he is in the heart of the wolves' den, from the very start their path had led straight into the den, as he's surrounded, the alpha wolf locks eyes with him, the other wolves back away, as if heeding a silent command from the alpha, he's mine, Otway's mind drifts back to the last time he saw his wife, she had urged him not to be afraid, it's revealed then she hadn't left him, but had tragically passed away, with grim determination Otway tapes many alcohol bottles to his right hand, and a knife to the other, he shatters the bottles, creating a makeshift weapon. Rising to his feet, he begins to recite his father's poem, his voice steady and defiant. The standoff with the alpha wolf intensifies. The ending is left to the imagination, the final battle between man and beast about to unfold. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.